more ancient history jewelry stories. Throughout all of my jewelry research over the years, I have come across some people who I would consider my jewelry soulmates. Some of these are predictable, like Marie Antoinette, but I came across one recently in a place where I wasn't expecting to find it. Ancient Egypt, circa 1800 BCE. This is the jewelry of Princess Kenmet. She's most notable for being found in an entirely unlooted tomb. Her tomb was found next to the pyramid of the pharaoh Amenemhat II, so it's generally assumed that he was her father. Unfortunately, we really don't know much else about her. Her jewelry, however, is exceptional. In this image, starting from the top, we have some gold bird ornaments that she would have worn in her hair. Then there's a partial necklace, which has been hypothesized to have been made in Crete, not Egypt. It has a blue enameled pendant with the image of a spotted bull, short lengths of chain, flower medallions, as well as a delicate butterfly-shaped clasp. Underneath this is a charming necklace with gold seashells and starfish. And just beneath that is one that I think is especially interesting. These charms look like they represent stylized flies, which come up repeatedly in ancient Egyptian jewelry. Now onto the real stars of the show, two diadems. The first is one of the most delicate and airy diadems I've ever seen. This truly looks like something out of a fairy tale. It's made of gold wire intertwined with nearly 200 flowers. Flowers are inlaid with carnelian and turquoise, and the crosses are actually clusters of lotus flowers. The second diadem is an airy and feminine take on a more familiar shape. This is inlaid with carnelian, turquoise, lapis, and glass, and it has two beautiful adornments. One is a tree, which has alternating leaves and flowers, and the other is a representation of the vulture goddess Nekbet. All of these pieces share something in common. They're incredibly delicate, and I do think that they speak to the personal taste of the wearer. It makes me wonder if Princess Kenmet was perhaps the personal patron of a goldsmith, someone whose art she really admired. It's clear that this jewelry was produced to her specifications based on her own taste, and it's clear that she valued a certain dainty aesthetic, which really speaks to me. I do love all ancient Egyptian jewelry, but these have a sort of romantic quality to them that I tend to associate with the Georgian and Victorian eras. Although we don't know much else about Princess Kenmet, I do think she left behind some clues about her personality in this gorgeous collection of jewelry.